months ago, I was cutting grass in my front yard. And the mailman shows up with a letter from the army. Now I'm here. There's no idea of where I'm gonna end up. Welcome to France. What happened here? Some questions don't have good answers. There's a lot of soldiers out there, and there's only four of us. Find out what's inside that compound. What is this? A thousand year army. These thousand year soldiers. What's not in that wall? What do you do with those people? Hey guys, welcome to Screen Fever. My name's Adam Barnard, and today I am joined by Jackson Smith to discuss the brand new trailer to the J.J. Abrams-produced horror film, Overlord. Overlord follows a group of soldiers that parachute into Nazi-occupied France the day before D-Day and stumble upon a horrific creation and lab where zombies or other disgusting monsters are being crafted as weapons of war. It might or might not be part of the Cloverfield universe. We don't know yet, as we never do. So, Jackson, what did you think of the trailer, and what are your just initial impressions? You know, the trailer just came out at Comic-Con, um, or for the preview of Comic-Con, and it's very secretive, as most J.J. Abrams projects are, so this is the first time we actually get a glimpse of the kind of style and tone and, and even some of the plot elements. So what are your thoughts? Well, it's certainly not Cloverfield. <laughs> um, I mean, like this film was, you know, teased as one of the Cloverfield spinoffs or the next one in the Cloverfield franchise. What Cloverfield actually is, is kind of up for grabs. We're four, three movies in. None of them have been technically related to each other at all. Some have even gone into production as different movies, as was the case with Cloverfield Paradox. And they've all been kind of all over the place in terms of in terms of quality. Like, I loved 10 Cloverfield Lane. I thought that was an <laughs> excellent chamber piece. Really, really cool, fu fun, scary filmmaking. Uh, you've got the first one, which is part of that big found footage wave in the early 2000s. And then you had Paradox, which came out earlier this year, which was... A hot mess, to put it to put it nicely, kind of kind of not a good movie. And so then you've got Overlord, which doesn't have Cloverfield in the title and is definitely the most stylistically or looks the most stylistically divorced from from all of the other ones. I mean, like this is a looks like a straight up horror movie like the trailer was shockingly graphic, like all of those, yeah, you know, like blood and completely crawling out of people it was just like the like the other cloverfield films have been kind of cool because they've been tasteful with the violence and a little discreet with it which made it all kind of scarier whereas this is just like putting it all front and center and saying like nope this is a full-on body horror movie 
take it or leave it. So I just, I mean, it's interesting. It's bold. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I would go with bold. I have a lot of good things to say about this trailer. I have a lot of bad things. Yeah. Um, first <laughs> off, the movie looks fantastic. Visually, it just looks breathtaking in the way it's lit and colored and and co- composited and put together the visual effects i thought looked good i mean full disclaimer i'm at a new house with no wi-fi so i had to watch my phone so maybe it's just <laughs> like you know everything looks so crystal clear on my phone yeah. um but i i think like uh, here's one thing. I have a soft spot for this kind of story because I grew up watching movies like The Longest Day or other stuff like with paratroopers jumping behind enemy lines. Dirty Dozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dirty Dozen. So I like that whole World War II aesthetic and to, you know, um, tap into modern technology and its capability to, you know, use visual effects to make the whole parach- you know, paratrooper sequence look really terrifying and very mm-hmm. uh, claustrophobic and, and, and realistic. Like, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. So on one hand, the first part of this trailer depicts a very very well shot tense um riveting kind of wartime action it's character driven and then about halfway through we crank up the modern rock track and we just go full slasher and that i didn't like can we talk about the mono rock track for a second because it's like it's almost like i'm watching three different trailers there's the first half which is you're right is like like i i get it you're supposed to think this is a normal world war ii movie and then Nazi zombies, you know, okay, <laughs> fine. Yeah, sure. That's a good, that's a good concept for a movie. That's a fine concept for a trailer, but it's like, yeah, then they start putting in this like rock track in the background, which is just so in contrast with everything else we're watching. And it's also yeah. like you, you, you sometimes see that with movies set in specific time periods and you know, that music doesn't fit that specific time period. So it's like, you've got that and it's like, it's kind of, spo- it's kind of trying to be campy and funny, but it's like nothing JJ Abrams has produced has been campy and funny. So we're seeing his name on top of all this. It just, I don't know. It, the, this, this trailer never really, in my opinion, I don't think it ever found out what it wanted to be, but the movie itself it looks like a pretty straightforward Nazi zombie action movie, which like, hey, I don't know. I'd see that. Sure. I'm pretty sure he's going to try to link something to Cloverfield at the end. There's going to be some uh, monster yeah. where we're like, oh, my God, it looks like the one from the 2008 film. Uh, um, uh. Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> They've been very liberal about how thin the connections are between Cloverfield movies like their name is really the biggest thread between all the films. Um, and this doesn't even have that. It doesn't even have. The, well, the title, the well, you got to remember, you got to remember Cloverfield paradox for a long time was called the God particle. And it was supposed yes. to come out in theaters and not too long before it came out in theaters, they dropped a super bowl ad that said, check your Netflix tonight. There's a new <laughs> Cloverfield movie that's going to be streaming. And at the time, you know, before everyone actually went and watched the damn thing, it was kind of exciting. Like we were like, oh, oh this I, is... I was so jazzed. Oh, yeah. I went I went and watched it right after the Super Bowl. Win. And credit where credit is due. J.J. Abrams knows how to give the audience a good time in terms of just in terms of the way he teases out projects and and likes to kind of play with expectations, um, both in his movies and how he distributes or kind of lets people in on what he's doing with his movies. I guess that's fun. You know, he likes mystery. Yeah. He likes surprises. This doesn't look like a Cloverfield movie, like you said. Um, I, I can see if they want to tie it in. It just seems like a really well shot warm movie that's going to have a very campy, you know, sci fi original movie type twist. It's just shot exceptionally well because it's J.J. Yeah. Abrams produced. Yeah. I, I don't know if they're going to go all Suicide Squad with a tone in the second half. Like, I actually worry that the movie itself is going to be, you know, they parachute in, it's really riveting, and then it just kind of goes beyond a suspension of disbelief and overstays its welcome. Um, You know, like you said, the last movie that kind of fits into these mid-budget bad robot movies is The Cloverfield Paradox, and and that um, that was a little uneven. So Yeah. Well, it's interesting what you said about the surprise element, because I feel like every one of these Cloverfield movies or every every pretty much everything J.J. Abrams does sort of on his own has this element of novelty to it. You know, like like there was there was the the, the first Cloverfield movie was it had such a cryptic 
ad campaign. I, I mean, I remember seeing that trailer for the first time in theaters and being like, oh my gosh, what the heck is that? You yeah. know? And then, and then 10 Cloverfield Lane, of course they shot in secret. Um, so nobody knew about it until like a month <laughs> before it came out. And then, and then Cloverfield Paradox, they just literally just dropped on us. Whereas like with this movie, not only does the the advertising campaign around it feel pretty standard, but the movie itself looks pretty standard. It almost makes me wonder if they are pulling a big punch, you know, if there is something about this movie that, you know, we're, we don't know yet because this trailer was so obvious, <laughs> so very clearly Nazi zombie action movie. Like, I, I, I can't help but wonder if there is you know, the movie's going to come out and there's going to be some crazy thing about it. Like they're going to release two different endings in theaters. Like I know the new yeah. un unfriended movies doing that, or like it's about something completely different or they do a title change at the last second. I don't know. I I'm, I'm just anticipating something crazy and cool is going to happen. Um, we'll see. Um, but at the very least the movie looks like it'll be a fun 90 minutes. So, yeah. Yeah. I, th I think like, it's the kind of movie that if you pitch to me, I'd want to see like a, a cause I love world war two movies. I love that whole era. I love the aesthetic and kind of like the, f how much film history is steeped in like the world war two era storytelling and, mm -hmm. and how many yeah. influences and kind of motifs have been developed around, um, that mm -hmm. subject matter in cinema. And, For you sure. know, there's a lot of potential to subvert that or kind of play with that. Um, with mm -hmm. a movie like this, I just, I really hope it doesn't, um, Fuck. yeah, that's, that's the kind of the gist of what I, what I'm thinking. It's like, yeah. I, I don't want it to reach and try something so quirky that it's a victim of its own ambition. And, um, a lot of times horror or slasher films or, or kind of like these super weird thrillers, they have a good premise, but they, they, they work hard to ground the story or the characters or the look, and then they just fly off the deep end and kind of just disregard any logic or, or expectations of the kind of tone and, or story yeah. they're crafting. And like over I, again, like I got to be very clear, trailers are, are only there to get your ass in the seat. They're only yeah. there to get you to be interested enough to go buy a ticket. Um, yeah. or log on to Netflix and watch it or whatever. And um, so that's why I don't try to judge the tone of a film through the tone of a trailer because a lot of times I'll just go what they think yeah. is going to excite people the most and not what accurately represents the movie. So again, yeah. I'm not saying this movie is going to suck or it's going to be the Book of Henry of J.J. Abrams movies. It's going to be so disjointed. Or it's going to be Cloverfield like, Paradox. I mean, like everything yeah, you were just say describing that. is exactly Cloverfield Paradox. Great premise, an, an attempt to do something interesting and then a complete disregard for logic or character or anything in the last half so it's like yeah, yeah i mean fingers crossed that this will be different well let us know what you guys thought in the comments section whether you're going to watch it or what you think the twist of, of the movie will be <laughs> in terms of how they distribute it or how it ties into potentially a franchise that we've already seen as always, like, comment, and subscribe if you like our content, and also go check out how we're starting to add some of our short films from college. Uh, we're going to kind of mix that in with some of the commentary content like this and the podcast we do to help diversify our channel, and if there's anything you would like to see that we could provide in terms of, of content and commentary, please let us know, because we're always open to suggestions about what people want to hear.